Good evening, uh, everyone. Hallelujah. That's our greeting as Christian to each other. We thank God for this uh, hour whereby, by His grace, we are able to come and share a little bit of uh, the Word of God with the believers in Jesus Christ. Uh, this evening, the topic is based on uh, the letter of Paul to the Galatians. We'll be taking uh, uh, the reading from uh, the chapter 5. And uh, the tag actually is uh, managing our divine freedom. Paul was addressing the Galatians and the, here in the chapter 5. Our read is not going to be follow, but I'll be taking one verse at the time. I might skip some. But he said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ had made us free. So that's a freedom, a liberty. Liberty is what actually we all desire. And every time we hear the word liberty, it means that we were in a bondage. We were in a state whereby there's no way for us to enjoy the freedom. And that's where liberty is needed. So Christ has come for us to receive that liberty. Liberty about what? We continue. Wherein Christ has made us free. The liberty, when we say Christian, the liberty, there's no other way for us to gain that liberty. It has to be through Jesus Christ and from the work performed on the, on the cross which is very important. There's no way for us to talk liberty without having our faith set on Jesus Christ and him alone. When we continue, it says, and the be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So now when we get to gain that liberty, we just need to remember at all times that that liberty actually was not an easy thing because being a bondage and then for, for any reason you get out from that bondage, you know that there was a very serious work performed there for you to get out from it. So the following verse, which is the verse 2, Behold, Actually, we continue the verse 1 said, Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Which means once you are out from that bondage, you are out from that thing which holds you captive. And now you gain your liberty. Make sure you don't go back into it again. So this is actually what uh, describes Paul. Paul. Paul, we all know his story, where he came from, and the, the day he gets uh, that encounter with Jesus Christ, his life had changed and then changed forever until he ends his days. So what happened? This guy, Paul, as he was saying in another book, first uh, uh, Timothy, for example, which we are not going to read, so that book, uh, he was calling himself the chief of the sinners. And something happened to him when he was actually on his way to Damascus to persecute the Christians. Jesus himself appeared to Paul. But before that moment, he was in a bondage. What we call bondage here. He was not himself at all. The light he get to know these days until he end when his journey started with Jesus Christ, he never forget that light. 
So that light remained and he never turned back again until he ended his life in the ministry. But before then, when he was going, Jesus Christ, who had sealed his life and knew everything this man was supposed to go through, Christ knows it all before even he gets into that journey. So as he was journey now going to Damascus, Christ has to appear to him. Why? Because he was handpicked by him and an assignment was already scheduled for him and there's no way for him to avoid it. So that's why Christ has to meet him there to turn things around and starting that day, his life changed and changed completely. So we want to remember here that the voice of uh, 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 Paul started hearing that day when he went blind because of the light, the intensity of that light, it was truly the voice of Jesus Christ. How do we know? We knew because when the light overshadowed him, he did not know what to do again, and he asked, who are you? And the voice he was hearing was, is me, Jesus Christ, who you have been persecuting. So what do we pick from there? We pick from there that at that moment, if you read the Bible and you trace the story, you know that Jesus Christ was not there at that time. Jesus Christ was not around. But we just want to highlight here that every time we face any situation and then we seek help, Jesus Christ will always descend and help. But not in this body. We will never see Christ again face to face until he turned back again. Let us remember that the time he was going up to the Father, two angels appeared and asked those who were watching, said, who are you? why are you guys so amazed and surprised that Christ you see going up will come back again and you will see him? So what does that tell you? It tells you that Paul going to persecute those people at Damascus, the people knew that, knowing that Paul was coming to them, what were they doing? They were praying, asking for God to help because they are Christian. So God did send the divine help, and divine help was Jesus Christ, so Jesus Christ came. But he did not come again. Remember, he did not show up so Paul can see him in his body. Why? Because it was not time for him to come down yet. The time for him to come down is going to be the second coming of Jesus Christ, but not at this time. Only God knows that time. Now, Christ came and Paul engaged now in his new journey, which will be a page which he flips. And since that time, he went through very difficult moments, which actually was a plan of purification. And after he went through that, his eyes opened and he can see and see clearly. And since that day, Paul can change and change completely. So what do we pick from there? We pick from there that once you get to know Christ, the only way for you to stand firm and stay on track for him will be to listen and pay attention. These days, we flip now from the Old Testament to the New Testament. What do we see? We can see that in the Old Testament, the people in those days, they have encounter with the Holy Spirit for a specific task. When they have something to do, the Holy Spirit will come and lead them and that will be done and the Holy Spirit will lead them again. But what we have these days, the people in the Old Testament, they do not have that thing. What do we have? We have the permanent, the permanent presence of the Holy Spirit in this age, this century, which the people of the they don't have. So which means we have and we have it all. We have a lot of it, and there's no way for us to say that we are not hearing God. Why? Christ make it so clear 
that is good that I go. Once I do go, the Holy Spirit will now come. And once he comes, he will be leading you and revealing a lot of mystery to you. So what do we need to do? We just need to arrest him. Because once you become Christian, you have to find yourself in a default position, which is the presence of the Holy Spirit, which now will be your guide and be talking to you at all times. How do we know? We know for sure that there's no believer who set his faith on Christ, which will never hear from God. Why? Because once you know Christ, Joshua was saying to chapter 1, he said, if you want to prosper and be successful in this life, <laughs> what you need to do is to make sure you meditate on this book day and night. Once that is done, and do not let this book to depart from you. That's what he said. Once that is done, that's the only way you can go through the process of the sanctification. Because it does not matter your state. Christ is ready to welcome you. And once he welcomes you, what happens? The process of the sanctification will come. So that you can remain on track. But the only way it happens, it has to be through the reading of the word of God. And by reading it, the Holy Spirit will be leading you and be detecting a lot of things to you, opening your eyes so you can see and see more. The other secret which I'm going to quickly share with you before uh, I round up is that you can be reading your Bible. You can try not uh, to let it depart from you. But there's something very important which I just want to highlight, which is our relationship. Why? We talk relationship here is not only with Jesus Christ, but with each other. Because every time we gather together to discuss the word of God, we exchange ideas. And that's another plus to us when we try to explore the word of God. We alone will not be able to do it. Why? Because God is one in three. There's a relationship which is God's characteristic, which we also, with each other, we need to entertain and develop. So that is why it's very important to gather together as believers and go to the Word of God and explore it. Now, as we go down through the same book here, Paul was saying something about uh, circumcision, which is what? He says that actually that should not be a qualification for you. Why? Once you get to know Christ and you have that a personal relationship with him, it should be enough for you. Being circumcised will not be a condition sine qua non for you to be qualified for the kingdom of God. How do we know that? Well, let's say, for example, we grab uh, uh, the book of Luke uh, chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, we are about to round up right now. Luke chapter 23, is, is something happened there. These are two malefactors which uh, 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 were crucified with uh, Jesus Christ. So something amazing happened uh, there which uh, as Christian, we want to make sure we do not uh, take for granted. What do we see? Uh, we're going to take uh, the chapter 23, I was saying, Luke chapter 23, and the verse uh, 38. Uh, we're taking it from the verse 38. What does it say? It said, And a superscription also was written over him in a letter of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hang rail on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. So which means, <laughs> this is a demonstration, another way to illustrate that at the end of our earthly journey, there are two destinations. And then all depend of your confession on earth. Listen. So that time, did they call them malefactors, which means they do bad, they were gangs, 
they did a greeting which was against actually the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they were not good people. So now, listening, one of them was saying that, and listening to what happened to the second. So, but the other malefactor, which is the other bad guy, answering, rebook him. He, the other one who rebook him, the first one, who was trying to mock Jesus Christ. He said, if you think that you are the son of God, as you are saying it, you are claiming it, save yourself and please save us all. So now listen, saying, does not thou fear God? So the other a, a, a malefactor was saying that, seeing that are in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deed. Which means, that's a confession. This here is a confession. Did he know? That's why the Bible declares, if you cover your sin and you want to hide it, there's no way for you to receive mercy from God. So this second one, he said, what are you talking about, God? A, 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 a for? We deserve what we gain here because we do bad. But this man here is the son of God, our Savior, the Messiah. He does not deserve this. And because of that statement, Look at what happened to him. We take the verse 41. And uh, we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deed. But this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus. <laughs> you see that? Confession and the thirst of, uh, to sa of salvation. Are we following that? Now listen to the la what the last verse said. He said unto him, Jesus. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And to wrap it all up, what does the verse 43 say? He said, and Jesus said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, today you shall be with me in the paradise. Can you imagine that being circumcised has nothing to do with gaining that salvation which we all desire? Is your confession confessing Christ and accepting him like Savior? That's the only thing which can cause us to be saved. May the peace of the Lord be with us in the name of Jesus Christ.